How do fractional CMOs hit the ground running? Hi, I'm Dean Way. Welcome to Fractional CMOs and the 90 Day Win. There's a lot of variety in how they kick off a new client engagement. Um, in fact, there's so much variety, it's valuable to just listen to what opportunities they look for, what they tackle first, and what they wish wasn't true when they start a new project. So let's find out. Uh, hi. <laughs> hi, Pete. Hello, hey, Dean. Peter. How are you doing? Good, thanks. It's uh, it's cold where you are right now, and yes, when we record is. this, and it's cold where I am, but not as but it is, weather's more sensible here in North Carolina than in a lot of places in the country. So we're always grateful for that, in North Carolina. Uh, okay, Peter. So um, the podcast is based on a hypothetical one year engagement, right? Okay. As a fractional CMO, right? So uh, let's imagine you just started a new engagement. It's like day one. You're the fractional CMO. Okay, we're going to talk about what kind of early wins and successes you might look for in the beginning, but first, like, let's talk about what, like, one or two problems do you typically see with a new client, or what problems do you, like, expect to find, and so you go hunting for them on day one, and okay. uh, before you talk about that, tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, uh, my name is Peter Geisiker. I'm a fractional CMO. I've been working with B2B SaaS startups since about 2000, uh, so I've handled mm -hmm. pretty much every kind of marketing issue those companies have, uh, and I've been very blessed throughout my marketing career, and I've been mentioned in a lot of business publications, including the New York Times, Fortune Small Business, Inc., and Money Make, uh, Money Magazine, places like that, and uh, right now I'm managing several million in ad spend. All right. And what uh, problems do you normally go hunting for? Because you kind of know you're going to find them. Yeah, it's always the <laughs> same thing. Uh, one, oh, wow. okay. are they focusing on a niche market or are they trying to be all things to everybody? Uh, the key today, especially if you don't have a gigantic ad budget, is focus on a niche market that has the biggest, most painful problem your product or service will solve. Uh, so first thing is always, are they focused on a niche market? Two, and you don't know this, Wayne, uh, messaging is everything. Uh, are, is their messaging clear to the point? Is it explaining the major problem they solve? Are they right. explaining the value and the benefits they provide? And are they doing it in a simple way? I always like to say, if a 12-year-old can read it and understand it, it's good. If they can't, make it more simple. And for the love of God, don't use industry jargon like digital ecosystems, paradigm shifts, synergy Talk like a human being talking to your best friend. Uh, don't try to use every every high tech business MBA word you can find. Because honestly, people don't like reading what they don't understand, and it kind of makes you seem pompous yeah. for for, yeah. for doing that way. And the uh, the great advertising master David Ogilvy, and I believe it's David who said this, nobody ever complained that something was too easy to understand. So yep, exactly right. Simple yeah. sales. You're, you're more generous than I am because I don't even think um, 12 year old is good enough. All of my stuff is written at, and I work almost exclusively with um, some tech company that makes something complicated. And I uh, yeah. uh, I keep it at n a nine year old, and the reason for that is it's about fourth grade English, mm -hmm. and I keep it at fourth grade English because especially in tech, people think okay, it's tech, so it can be more. Actually, tech probably has a greater percentage of people working in it who learn English as a second language Very than true. any other industry. And uh, and so if you keep everything at a fourth grade, uh, uh, at least for the, the not all communications, but in the kind of comms that I write, right, mm -hmm. uh, I keep it all at ninth grade or fourth grade level because then I know that everyone it doesn't matter if they grew up in Wisconsin or they grew up in you know, Islamabad, right, or Taipei, right, they'll understand every word that's being said. Exactly. And uh, I mean, I want every one of those people, and so I don't want to like throw. I'm not going to throw anyone away just because I, I like using a word. 
that, you know, is like a $4 word that someone's going to have to look up later or might exactly. take their attention away and say, what does that mean? I know I've seen that word before. What does that mean? Oh, I get it. I get it. And then like, you've lost nine seconds of their attention. They're back and like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, now I'm not as interested anymore. I'm out. Yeah. And when yeah. somebody goes to your website and they have to read the open opening paragraph or two, two, three, yeah. four, five times to try to figure out what your company actually does. And in tech, I see this so often where you just yeah. read their homepage, read their services page and like, what do you do? Yeah. No matter how much money you've spent to get their attention, they never owe you their attention. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. All right. So that's the problem you go looking for. Like what kind yep. of like early win or low hanging fruit? I hate that phrase. Uh, low hanging fruit. Do you like like to try to put up on the board as a win in the first 90 days if you can? Uh, well, I definitely like, first of all, as much as possible within the first 90 days to update mm-hmm. the m- messaging. So we are, f- we are focused on a niche, m- on a niche market, uh, a strong value proposition, uh, if possible to try to get proof of instead of saying, well, we make the greatest exit solving Y, well, how about we solve it 27% faster uh, at 58% cheaper on and on. I mean, get some proof, uh, get testimonials from, from clients, just really update the sales messaging to one so people really understand what you sell the right. problem you solve and how it will make their lives e- easier so i always like to start with the website on that uh then using that core messaging i like to uh, update the messaging in all of the online ads Google, LinkedIn, Facebook, et cetera. I mean, y- you want, and I mean, you know this, you want your messaging to be consistent across all ch- channels. You don't, you don't want Facebook to say one thing, Google Ads to say something completely different, your website to say something different. You need really consistent messaging. I also like to update the messaging for the sales team. Uh, they're the ones who are talking with the with the clients. And again, we need everyone in the the, the organization on the same page, ex- talking about the same problem or problems we solve. The same. The b- b- benefits we offer, uh, the same t- testimonials, the same case studies, the, the same. Plus, p- 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 everything builds on everything else, so you benefit exactly. from that kind of integration, right? Also, exactly. the way you just phrased that is exactly the way that um, I phrase it when I'm talking to clients. In that, I say, uh, sort of the the life cycle for how you're going to be talking to prospects, and you know, is you're talking at them, and you're talking to them. And you're uh-huh. talking with them. And I say, with them is normally sales. And you just said, sales, who sales? Who are they talking with, right? It's exactly the right phrasing, right? And really, uh, for the marketing part, it comes down from getting them to stop talking at people, which is basically saying, hey, sit still while I tell you about myself and my company and my product. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And talking to people. And, of course, you're going to talk to people. Then you're going to talk to them about you know them and what they're interested in and less about you and what you're trying to force them. To listen to so, yeah, exactly everyone exactly sales you have everyone subscribes to the same radio station w i i f m yeah. what's in it for right. me they don't care about you they don't really care about your business uh they don't care about your founders they care about i've got a problem that i want to have solved do you solve it yeah yep yeah, exactly right I tell clients, uh, everybody's in a negative present. If their present's not negative, there's no problem to solve. Uh, exactly. Everyone wants to get to a positive future. And your message to every single person is, your, here's your negative present. I can shortcut you to a positive future if you give me money. We don't yep. say the last part out loud normally. But, <laughs> <laughs> yep. but it's understood. It's not a charity. 
but you know, I can shortcut you to this positive future. And you know, it's so simple and you have to explain it to everybody. And honestly, yeah, I look at my own stuff and I still have to remind myself of it because it's so easy to, it's hard to get outside your own head, even though my whole job and the, the workshop I do for every client, it's all about getting people outside their own head and outside their business to look at it from the outside. And even I, you know, it's just human nature that it's hard to get outside your own head unless you're with someone who can like say, I'm not like, I know that's what you want to say, but no one's going to want to hear that. Exactly. Oh, well. And I mean, and this can be really difficult to do in tech, but somehow, and, and you, you can get this with, with, with case studies, interviewing clients, what is your return on investment? Uh, yeah. People who sign the, the check to your company want to know, are we going to save more money? Are we going to make more money? How is our business going to be improved financially compared to the cost of what we are purchasing? Yeah. So you're mostly talking to B2B or, or B2C audiences? Uh, for me, my specialty is B2B. And, it, uh -huh. and such a big thing is, okay, if we spend 50 grand on your software solution, 100 grand, right. how long is it going to take for us to re coop that and for this investment uh to to start to become profitable right so i mean you start off a new engagement right what do, what do no clients normally not see about their own business or don't know about their own business until you start working with them one they greatly overestimate what their uh what their core marketplace thinks about their company, about their product or service. Uh, yeah. A lot of assumptions because, well, we've done a little, little advertising on LinkedIn or we've gone to one trade show, automatically the world knows who you are and you're on the top of their radar. Uh, right. The truth is if we interview your target market, uh, probably a solid 95% or more have never heard of you. They don't know what you do. They don't know what you sell. And because... Mostly don't care. And definitely don't care. Yeah. And because so many companies do the mistake of, well, we need to create our marketing. Let's go copy well, what our top com competitors are, are saying you don't distinguish yourself as being different or special. You're just another another carbon copy doing exactly the same thing. Yeah. I mean, so you really need to show why you are unique. You're special. Apple computer does a wonderful job of this. I mean, you aren't going to mistake Apple with Microsoft or, 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 or I. BBM or Google. I mean, um, they do a, tre a tremendous job of showing we are d different. We're not the same as everybody else yet. So much for, for me in the tech industry, everybody just so blatantly c c copies each other. And yeah. if you look at their ads, their websites, all you have to do is change the company logo and they're exactly the same. Yep. I, yeah. uh, I, I wish I could disagree with you, but that is literally true. Yeah. Uh, okay. Then um, uh, for a, a lot of people who watch this podcast, like um, um, they're just in the process of hiring their first ever fractional CMO. Yep. And so, you know, they're interviewing, they're talking, they're reading around, right? And um, so uh, let, let's take a moment and sort of tell on ourselves and break the code of silence, okay? Uh, if you were a CEO hiring a fractional CMO, how would you extract the last penny of value from that one-year engagement with that fractional CMO? Like, how would you squeeze all the juice out of that okay. orange? You absolutely must set measurable goals. Uh, a measurable goal isn't saying we want to get as many leads as we 
can. Well, for some companies, right. as many leads as they can might be two a day. For another company, it might be 200 a day. Set measurable goals. And within those goals, time frames to achieve them. Say, well, we want to increase the amount of leads coming in from our current spend by 12% in 90 days. Things like that are workable. So uh, you absolutely have to have to set measurable goals. Uh, a goal, well, we, we want to have a better website. Well, that's not a measurable goal, saying we want the website to increase in search engine rankings for these specific key words. That's, that's a measurable, uh, a, a measurable goal, uh, uh, saying we want to increase traffic by 10 per, 10% over, over the next 90 days or 25% over the, the next six months. Everything should be measurable. And right. to take that a step further, measurable to how does it impact sales? Because you might have a, a, a Facebook post or something that goes viral or whatever, but that's great for ego. Did it impact the sales of the company? Right. Okay. And what about, um, so what are, obviously for every client that you ultimately sign, you spoke to multiple companies as prospects, right? And yes. they didn't make it to the signed deal stage. So for the ones who sort of didn't make it or the ones that you got into conversation with, what are the red flags that that client should not be hiring a fractional CMO or isn't ready to hire a fractional CMO yet? Number one, well, number one and number two are pretty close. One, they don't have any money. Uh, yeah. We, we all know the cliche, it takes money to make money. If your business can barely afford a part-time fractional CMO, how are you going to afford a marketing team? How are you going to right. afford to advertise and out market your community? Competitors. Uh, so before you bring on a fractional CMO, get money. Second thing is having a CEO who wants to be the chief marketing officer. And when you have your initial talks with them, you might say, well, some strategies I would consider are, well, no, 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 that's really not a direction I want to go or we tried that once it does it does not work uh, if you're bringing on a fraction of CMO you're hiring somebody who is an expert somebody who should know a lot more about marketing in your industry than you do you're hiring them to lead marketing let them do their do, 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 do their job and as we uh, as we mentioned previously set measurable goals I mean that is the key if you say we want to in increase uh, leads by 10 percent over the next 90 days that's something right. you can easily measure so knowing if they're doing their, their, their job well or not it's either Yes or no? Are the are the goals being uh, being hit, or or are they not? All right, Peter. I, you're in Wisconsin right now, so I really want to thank you for you know. It's not like we do these outdoors, thank God. But oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I know it's below freezing, even though it's the daytime, and so uh, try to stay warm. <laughs> okay. And uh, thanks very much. Uh, I want to uh, ask two more questions real quick. Okay. How should people get in touch with you and who should get in touch with you? Uh, I The best way to get in touch with me 
is they can either go to my website at geisiker.com, G-E-I-S-H-E-K-E-R.com, or call me at 920-318-0654. The types of clients I'm seeking uh, are generally going to be B2B SaaS uh, companies. That's where I have... Uh, the majority of my experience, and it's where I've experienced the most the most success. I mean, if you're in B2B SaaS, I've experienced the problems you're having over and over and over, and I know how to solve them. All right. Sounds great. All right. Thank you again so much for this. I really appreciate it. It was great to meet you. Oh, it was absolutely my pleasure. Uh, thanks, everyone. See you on the next episode.